All right, guys, so instead of moving on to the next case for linear second order constant coefficient homogeneous differential equations, instead, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna answer a question that was sent in. The question was, why do we take our solution y to be linear combinations of the two solutions that we get from both of our roots? Uh, so recall that for a linear second order constant coefficient homogeneous differential equation, we have a characteristic equation that looks something like this, a r squared plus b r plus c is equal to zero. And whenever we solve that using factoring or the quadratic formula, uh, we got two roots, R1 and R2. Again, we have two roots because it is a quadratic uh, equation that we are solving. Um, so anyway, after we got these two roots, we said, uh, since we assumed the uh, solution is of the form y is equal to e to the r times t, this gives us two solutions, y1 associated with the first root, and then y2, which is associated with the second root. So if both of these are valid solutions to the equation, then why do we express our solution as linear combinations of these two? So this is what I'm gonna be answering in this video. Okay, so let's consider the following differential equation, y double prime plus two y prime minus three y is equal zero. We can go straight into the characteristic equation by pulling off the coefficients. So we get r squared plus two r minus three is equal to zero. And we can factor this into r plus 3 and r minus 1, which gives us two roots, r1, negative 3, and then r2 is equal to 1. And both of these are real, and we know exactly how to solve that from the previous video. So what we have here is we have a y1 associated with the first root, which is e to the negative 3 times t. And we also have y2, which is equal to e to the t associated with the second root. And whenever we talked about this in, in the last video, what I said to do is just take linear combinations of these two. So I said that the final solution y is going to be equal to c1 times e to the negative 3t plus c2 e to the t. But again, why do we do this? That's the question. So let me illustrate this answer by showing you guys this. Since we know that y1 and y2 must satisfy this different equation because that's what we solve for, let's take a look at c1 times y1 which comes out to be c1 times e to the negative three times t. So if I were to differentiate this, so c1 y1 prime, if I were to differentiate this twice and throw it back into our differential equation, uh, I want to show that this is a valid solution. A multiple of a solution is going to be a valid solution. So uh, let's see here. c1 times y1 prime comes out to be negative three times c1 e to the negative three times t and then c1 times y1 double prime differentiate again, and what we get is nine times c1 e to the negative three times t. So when I plug this back into our differential equation, we get nine times c1 e to the negative three times t plus two times negative three c1 e to the negative three times t, and then minus three times y, which is c1 e to the negative three times t. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression and what we get is we get 9c1 e to the negative 3 times t minus 6c1 e to the negative 3 times t and then minus 3c1 e to the negative 3 times t. And we can see that all this cancels out nicely to 0. And since it equals 0, so 0 is equal to 0, uh, we know that that does satisfy the differential equation. Um, so basically what I wanted to show is that any combination of our first solution, C1, Y1, uh, is a solution. And with uh, similar logic, we can do the exact same thing for C2, Y2. So C2, Y2 is also a valid solution for some C2. Uh, C1 and C2 are just arbitrary constants. So all I'm saying is that any multiple of Y1 and Y2 are solutions that we determined. Any multiple of a solution is still going to be a solution. And that's just because the uh, multiple, the scalar that we're multiplying by C1 or C2, it just cancels out. So that still doesn't answer the question though, why we assume uh, both of these are added together. But let me ask you this. If we know that C1, Y1 is a valid solution and we know that C2, Y2 is a valid solution, how can we express our final solution so that it captures all of possible solutions? If I were to just say, okay, let's just let our solution equal to C1, Y1, and, and let's just forget about C2, Y2, then, then I lose this information right here. And similarly, if I assume the other way around, I lose this information right here. So instead what I do is I add both of them together. 
and that way it includes all possible solutions uh, from both of these two cases, C1Y1 and C2Y2. And we can further show that this still satisfies the differential equation. Linear combinations of any number of solutions will always satisfy a linear differential equation. Key word is linear. If it wasn't linear, then this wouldn't necessarily be the case. And that's why I said, since our differential equation is a linear differential equation, then we can just superimpose the two solutions and take that as our solution. And just to further build on your intuition of uh, why this is the case and why this contains all solutions, um, let's let C1 equals zero, then this term cancels out. And for any C2, then I, then I get everything contained in uh, this part right here. Or similarly, let's say that let's let C2 equal zero. So this cancels out. And then I have everything contained in here. And then also by adding them for whenever C1 and C2 are non-zero, uh, that will still satisfy the difference equation. And let's go ahead and show that right now. Okay, so here we have our solution y, and it is the linear combinations of y1 and y2. Uh, if we were to differentiate this once uh, to get y prime, what we get is negative 3 c1 e to the negative 3 times t, and then plus c2 e to the t. And then we can do that again to get y double prime, which comes out to be 9 times c1 e to the negative 3 times t plus c2 e to the, uh, to the t. So now let's take all of this and let's throw this back into our differential equation. So we get y double prime, which is 9 c1 e to the negative 3 times t plus c2 e to the t, and then plus 2 times y prime, which comes out to be a minus 6 c1 e to the negative 3 times t and plus 2 c2 e to the t. I already distributed the 2. And then again, minus 3y, so minus 3c1 e to the negative 3 times t minus c2 or minus 3c2 e to the t. Um, and this all has to equal 0, so let's verify that this, that this does in fact come out to 0. So let's take a look at the e to the negative 3 t's. Um, we have 9 of them here, and then we take 6 away, so we're at 3, and then we have a minus 3 right there, so those all cancel out. And now let's take a look at the e to the t's. So we got, have a plus 1, uh, plus 3, and then we have minus 3. So that all, those all cancel out as well, and leaving us with 0 is equal to 0. So what this shows is that y, which is linear combinations of y1 and y2, does in fact satisfy the differential equation. But more importantly, y of this form, c1 e to the negative 3t plus c2 e to the t, by adding those, those two solutions together, we can reach all possible solutions because c1 and c2 are arbitrary. We don't know c1 or c2 until we apply our initial conditions. But the point that I want to make is that since y1 and since y2, which were e to the negative 3t and e to the t, since both of these were valid solutions, the only way to ensure that all these solutions can be reached is by taking the linear combinations and taking that as our solution. And that's the case for any linear differential equation. And by showing you guys this stuff over here, I showed you that we still have a solution that satisfies our differential equation, which also is very important. So anyway, thank you to the person who sent in this question. Um, again, uh, the, in the next videos, uh, unless you guys have more questions, in the next videos, I plan on going over the case where R1 and R2 are complex. And then, well, that's, that's the second case. And then also the final case where R1 is equal to R2 and um, the repeated roots case. So yeah, don't hesitate to send in questions. I'll make a video just like I, I did uh, to answer this guy's question that sent it in. So yeah, I'll see you guys later.